Hello. Um, so my name's Kevin Flanagan. I'm here this evening with Dada Mahesh Varananda. Perfect, Kevin. Very impressive. Thank you. And uh, well known for uh, Proud, which is the progressive utilization theory. Correct. Uh, so, Dada, what brings you here to Dublin? Actually, um, my friend now, Kid, sent a copy of my book, After Capitalism, Economic Democracy in Action, to President Michael Lee Higgins. And the president actually read it and actually liked it. So he asked Niall to come for an interview and to meet him, and Niall invited me to come along. So when we went to the presidential palace last Wednesday, which was, I believe, the 12th of February, um, the president uh, talked for an hour with us about the ideas of the book, saying that these ideas are very important. Uh, it's a remarkable book. He said it should get much wider circulation. He's against, of course, the neoliberal economics. And uh, because of this invitation, I also came for one week and was grateful to have this opportunity tonight in the uh, Wynn's Hotel to um, talk to 40 people and to get their ideas, your ideas, about how to make a more sustainable and a more equitable world for everyone. Okay, um, maybe you could say a few words about about Prout. Uh, Prout is the progressive utilization theory, and it's an alternative to both the capitalist model and the communist model. Um, it's based on the economic self-reliance uh, of each region and country as far as possible. It's based on cooperatives. It's based on environmental protection, protecting our planet and it's based on ethical and spiritual perspective. So it, um, it guarantees the minimum necessities of life to everyone, food, clothing, shelter, education, medical care. This should be the first priority of any economy. And it's based on the idea that the economy um, should, all the enterprises should be run either as small scale sustain, uh, small scale um, private enterprise, or cooperatives, which are more democratic in nature, or finally public utilities that are run uh, uh, by the government on a no-profit, no-loss basis for the, for the benefit of the entire economy. So in brief, this is the proud uh, social economic model uh, to make a better world. Okay, excellent. Um, so, I. I know your work because, uh, not a little bit, but uh, I'm familiar with Proud because I read your, your previous, one of your previous books, which is also right. called After Capitalism. After Capitalism, Proud's Vision for a New World, okay. which was published in 2003 yeah. in English. It came out in 10 different languages. Um, yeah. yeah, so what, what I wanted to ask was, um, you know, so, so a lot of things have changed since 2003, and I know you have a, a new book. Um, there's also after capitalism, uh, but uh, you know, considering so s since 2003, a lot's happened. The world's changed. Um, we've been through a number of years of economic crisis. We've seen uh, global movements, uh, mass protest, uh, the Occupy movement. Um, I'm curious. Uh, do you see renewed interest in cooperative economic alternatives? And as, as a result of this re renewed, uh, these renewed movements, and uh, was that part of what inspired you to write the, your most recent book? Absolutely, it was. Um, actually, to tell you the truth, I was going to revise it and found that both the world has changed so much in the last 10 years as well as the Proud Movement and the Economic Democracy Movement have developed so much in the last 10 years. And the activism of the Occupy, the, the in, indignados, the in, yeah. indignant indignados. people of uh, the young people of Spain and Portugal, for example, these are very powerful movements and much more is happening uh, every day. The 
the amount of social protest and social manifestations that are taking place around the world. I mean, if you see historically, it is accelerating so fast and happening in so many parts of the world now. Um, and it's tremendous uh, quantum leap is taking place. Unfortunately, the media, the, the corporate media that does affect our life and our perspective a lot, um, makes it seem like everything's going on as always, as normal, that this economic capitalism will continue forever, just as it is today. Um, there's no end in sight. In fact, human systems have always changed. Uh, no system lasts forever. And uh, I think that global capitalism is terminally ill. I think there are fundamental flaws, like the gross overaccumulation of wealth. It's not being shared. Um, the money spent in speculation instead of productive enterprises, um, the destruction of the environment, the ecology. Um, all of these are reasons why capitalism cannot last. Nothing in nature lasts forever, except it uh, grows on continuously, except uh, a cancer, which will, if it's not stopped, it will eventually kill its host. And that's what you see happening right now. The planet Earth is in mortal danger because of the greed of corporate capitalism. Um, I like, I, I enjoyed that, what you said earlier during the presentation about the, the business news. Uh, they're not interested in, uh, cooperatives. in, in cooperatives, you know, because it's boring. It's boring for them. You know, it's boring for them, exactly, yeah. They, it's not, you, you can't speculate with them, you can't buy and sell with them, you can't, uh, you know, it's, it's like the sports. You can let, them. give them a loan, and they'll pay you back at 3% interest or something, or something reasonable, you know. But that's boring for, for big investors. They, they want to control things, they want to make and break things, and they can't do it with cooperatives. They can't do it with cooperatives. Yes. Okay, um, so, we're talking about cooperatives and uh, so collective management of resources is a key component of Prout. Yes. And uh, traditionally we encounter this in the, the, co the cooperative movement. Of course. Yeah. Um, at the Peer to Peer Foundation, uh, we're big advocates of uh, the open knowledge, uh, sharing mm -hmm. uh, the commons. Of so. Uh, and very much, you know, we look at uh, the digital, the digital commons, but also the environmental commons. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious uh, to to know about. Uh, you know, you know I, I noticed earlier on you're using Linux. Of course, Ubuntu is my system. You Ubuntu, know. Right, right. Ubuntu, yeah, very nice. So, uh, do you see um, opportunities for? a sort of a meeting of cooperative movements and do you see uh, you know common values in this emerging movement for commons and the cooperative movement? It's happening every day. <laughs> yes, it's a sharing knowledge, sharing resources is fundamental to building a better world. And of course the um, greed of capitalism and the greed of you know, intellectual selfishness that, you know, all the money should come to me. And, you know, every system, of course, is created by a team. And the wonderful democracy of the open source um, information network is, is an inspiration to the world. The possibilities that we can build a better world in a different way. It's wonderful. Um, so, yes, the cooperative movement and the peer-to-peer -peer movement and open source movements, these are all based on the same fundamental ideas. And yes, we all work together every day. And yes, it's happening. Yeah, I really think there's a great, great opportunity um, for, for people to come together and, uh, and work together, you know. Yes. And, um, so, and similarly with, you know, 
you know, the, the environmental, you know, there's, uh, the, we think about our, 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 you know, I mean, I even feel strange now saying our common heritage, right. you know, because that nearly sounds like a property uh, thing, but, you know, uh, we have this gift of life on, uh, on this, on this, mm -hmm. in this world, mm -hmm. and um, we want to, to kind of, rather than package it up for our own, uh, you know, our own profit, we really, we need to be looking at sharing, you know, and uh, a different kind of relationship. The earth doesn't belong to us, we belong to the earth, is a fundamental idea that all indigenous people have felt. That we're connected to all forms of life. We're also connected to the sky, the air, the sea, the land. Uh, we're connected to it all, and we're connected to one another. And as brothers and sisters, as one human family, we need to share it. So yes, it's fundamental, and it's uh, essential to our survival as a species. Um, so, you know, you're a yogi. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm quite, you know, I'm, I'm interested in spirituality. And uh, actually, I asked you the, this question earlier, but I'm, I'd just like to ask you again. Um, what, what's the, the important about, how do you feel about the importance of spirituality? And do you feel that that is oftentimes neglected in uh, when we're, you know, you know as, as activists, as people who are, Involved in trying to build and make a better world, do you think it gets sidelined, or we forget about it, or, or maybe we think the the challenge is so great that uh, we're only we end up yeah we 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 forget about we forget about ourselves to take care of ourselves and nurture ourselves, uh, and uh, some I think there's a I think actually that there can be some danger in that you know of course. Um, we need to grow physically, mentally, and spiritually. And if we ignore that growth, that need to grow and to develop, then we run the risk of becoming materialistic, of seeing only the material part of the world and not the spirit of the world. Um, so it's very important, this spiritual perspective that we discussed earlier, this connection with everyone and everything, is essential to giving us the strength and the inspiration to keep on struggling to change the world. It seems like a very difficult thing to do, and you don't often get thanks for doing it. So that's why a daily practice like you spoke of, of meditation, for example, any daily practice that spiritually renews you, brings you back to nature, brings you back to happiness and joy and love, is fundamental to keeping the movement going. And yes, people who neglect that aspect of our human existence um, tend to be boring. <laughs> they tend to be angry a lot, you know, they, because we, these are human emotions that we all have. But if you're not working to, to, to limit the negative emotions and channelize them in a positive way, then you risk the burning out which is, no, I can't do it anymore. Now I have to go and be by myself. I have to, you know, take care of my needs. And the best is when we can do both simultaneously. Yeah. We're getting that daily renewal through our spiritual practice, and at the same time, the daily uh, collective struggle and campaigns to make a better world. And nothing's impossible. Together we can do it. We can make it happen. And the message of yoga, that every human being has more physical and mental and spiritual potential than you can imagine. That's the message that we need to keep going, to remember that we're connected to the universe, to 
we all have. And that common consciousness that flows between every one of us is the consciousness that will make it happen. Um, so, I guess that, I guess that there was uh, that there was any other uh, thinking about other questions. Um, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued about things that are happening in South America. Um, you, you're you're in Venezuela, right? Uh, we've heard a lot about it uh, on the news. We get a lot of news about uh, Chavez and now Maduro. But we also see that there's a lot happening with uh, Bolivia, Evo Morales, Rafael Correa, and in Brazil, different countries that um, there seems to be a shift in some, in some ways. And uh, tremendous shift. Tremendous shift. Yes. Can you say a little bit about that? Yes, um, there's an alliance between many South American and Central American countries, Latin American and Caribbean countries, um, trying to make an independent alliance free from the manipulation by the government of the United States, by the corporations of the United States, um, uh, providing the minimum necessities of life to everybody, and building cooperative and participatory democracy. Um, it's a very exciting time. Um, and the countries are supporting one another with the Bank of the South, with Telesur, uh, an alternative media network for the southern countries. Um, many, many initiatives taking place. Uh, and all of these are showing the possibilities independent Latin America of equals who are not manipulated by their big brother in the North, the United States. Uh, for 60, uh, at least 40 years I've been you know, struggling against the policies of the United States government, economic, military, industrial complex. And uh, the people of every country, they're wonderful people everywhere. And there are wonderful organizations everywhere. But we've got to stop this empire. You know, the world has seen 77 empires, according to historians. They sometimes differ on the number exactly, but about 77 from 5,000 years ago, the Ethiopian Empire, you know, the longest lasting one. And uh, all those empires, the Greek, the Roman, the British, the French, you know, they don't exist anymore. Uh, the United States is the last one. I don't think it's going to last forever. <laughs> and I think we're going to see a new dawn breaking very soon. And this is the moment of transition. This is a time of hope. And this is a time that we can build a better world. It's in our hands. We can do it. We can make it happen. I think it's, it's, it's um, I, yeah, I agree. It's very exciting. You, know, you can look, look around the way. You know, once you tune out from some of the mainstream media stuff and, and just dig a little under the under the surface uh, you can find these communities and organizations all around the world doing great stuff and uh, it's very encouraging yeah. sure yeah. Uh, Wikipedia the WikiLeaks yeah. the, uh, the showing you know speaking truth to power yeah yes saying we used to say and uh, it's time we do that yeah okay Dada thank you very much thank you very Sweet. much all right yeah for sure <laughs> great thank you okay